Hello, Barbara. Morning. <laughs> Can I ask you to introduce yourself, please? Yes. So um, I'm Barbara Gale. I'm Chief Executive St Nicholas Hospice Care in Bury St Edmunds, and we cover West Suffolk and Setford. Thank you. And um, I'm going to ask you some questions. I recently heard Nick Hume talk about how we've never faced such a crisis that has affected our whole lives. If you think we can't really get away from COVID-19, it's affecting how we work, how we interact with colleagues, how we live our lives, how we are with our families and, and with our friends. And it's really, it can be all consuming. Um, and I know when things are getting to me a bit, what really helped me is being outside um, listening to music, going for a walk, taking the dog out. Um, but you do miss that interaction, walking with friends. It really isn't quite the same. But one of the things that I've been really blessed about is that just before the crisis, my daughter and husband had some building work done and had to come and move in. Um, and that meant in March, my granddaughter was born and that they'd been living with me. And that's just been such a joy. And cuddles in the evening and even nappy changing is a great distraction so that's that's been lovely for me but I know that there are lots of grandmothers out there that haven't been able to do that and I really feel for that that must be so hard that you can't see that new baby and hold it so um, and in relation to our teams I think it's been hard for the teams as well I think especially our teams working in end-of-life care they haven't been able to see people, give them the hugs at those difficult times, limit visitors. It's just been really hard. So we've been doing some things that are a bit different. We've set up Facebook workplace for teams to interact. Um, there are virtual coffee mornings, pet groups happening. Um, and our mental first aiders have been giving some tips and advice and our physio has been giving tips about activity and which I need to do more of, I know. Thank you. It's, you're absolutely right. You have to start at home first, don't you, with yourself before you can look after other people. And you're clearly doing that uh, for your teams as well. Well, St Nicholas, like many other hospices, we've led the way in supporting people, our communities at times of death and grief. And I think we thought and we're really fearful that we were going to see such an increase. Um, but the pandemic has meant that we've worked differently. We haven't been able to do as much face-to-face -face work. Um, all the group activities that people loved and enjoyed, we haven't been able to do those. And that's meant we've had to work differently. We've had to do more telephone support, video consultations, um, and give a lot more support to our colleagues in health and social care and to care homes as well. Um, we've put more resources into our advice line so people could get hold of somebody for advice about symptoms, about pain control, about support. And, and I think the other thing we've tried to do is put a lot more resources on our website. So in the middle of the night, if somebody's looking for some advice that they can go to our website and find information about, about talking to children, about talking about dying about um, really thinking about symptom management, about drugs, things like that. I think one of the things I've just said, I know for me, that losing that connection must be so hard for families when somebody's dying or grieving. And we've got a Hearts and Crosses project where we've got carved hearts and, um, and carved crosses and knitted hearts that we're giving to people who are ill and their family members and people who are grieving so they can hold them and have that connection and I listened to a, a story about a lady who was holding one and her son had one while he was shielding and said it was like it meant she didn't feel so alone and we we sent them out to care homes and one resident said it's like receiving a hug in my hand which I thought was really lovely so it is really important for us to keep those relationships give that advice visit where it's needed um, but it is hard when you work differently that physical contact is so so missing yeah. and essential isn't it but you've added layers it seems to what it is that you're offering
it is one certainty we are all going to die um, and I think we all like to live in a world where we have some control about what we want to do if you think about when we are at school when we're studying our family lives houses cars we like to have some control and I think when we approach the end of our lives we need to think about what's important to us and if there are choices and, and things that we would like to do, it's pretty important to discuss them with friends and family, to talk to healthcare professionals about what's important. But it's not just about the medical things. As, as we become, um, if we become less well and we might die, there are things that you think, well, I would like to have friends and family around me. And if they can't, I'd like to be in my own environment or there are things I'd like to say. Um, and I think I was really struck when my daughter was preparing for the birth of her daughter. And, you know, she read books, watched videos, went to classes. Um, we got the equipment in the house. We thought about how she would want to be supported when she was in pain or um, what she would like to eat and drink and music. And I think when we're really ill or we're looking after somebody that's ill, there might be similar things that would give them comfort and support. The more prepared you are, the more informed you are, the more you know what dying might be like, the better you can cope with it, even though it's sad and hard. Um, knowing what might happen and what it might look like and how we can control pain can help people. So I think that's really important that we have those conversations and ask those questions. Quite right. And I like the fact that you're preparing it to birth as well, in that it's the same kind of planning and prepare preparedness. It is. What a compassionate county we live in in Suffolk. You know, when I think about uh, how we have seeing communities, villages, streets rally to support people who are vulnerable. Um, I know as professionals we've also collaborated. I've talked in more meetings than I have ever done, I think in years. But, but actually it's the people on the ground, it's the local people who have stepped up and really started to help people who are vulnerable and what I worry about in the future is I think there are going to be a lot of people struggling um, and I think we have to work um, as an organisation with systems, healthcare, councils but as a community I think we all need to carry on working together to support the most vulnerable in our society. Well put, thank you Barbara and thank you for your time and thank you for your thoughts, appreciate Pleasure. it. Thank you.